King Lear is a tragic play by Shakespeare. It tells the story of an imaginary king of Britain, King Lear, as the name of the play puts forth. King Lear has become old and decides to divide his wealth and power between two of his daughters, Regan and Goneril, ignoring his third daughter, Cordelia. Before starting the plot summary, I would recommend you to first see the characters of the play. Once you remember the characters the play will be easy for you to understand. Let's discuss characters. King Lear is the protagonist of the play. He wants everyone to make praise him. He wants people to flatter him. Goneril, she is the eldest daughter of King Lear. She betrays and plots the murder of his father. Regan, she is the second daughter of Lear. Both the sisters want to destroy their father. Cordelia, she is the third and youngest daughter of the king. Cordelia's love for his father is pure and true as compared to her elder sisters who flatter their father to gain fortune. Fool, he is a loyal member of the king's court. The fool protects the king when Cordelia is banished. Earl of Gloucester, he is King Lear's loyal friend. He is a foolish old man. Earl of Kent Caius, he is also Lear's friend and supporter. He is banished but still stays close to his king after disguising himself as Caius. Edgar a poor Tom, he is Gloucester's older and only legitimate son. He has fled from his son and is living in a hut in a village as poor Tom. Edmund, he is Gloucester's younger and illegitimate son. He is ambitious and allies with Goneril and Regan to destroy the king. Duke of Albany, he is Goneril's husband. He refrains his wife from killing Lear. Duke of Cornwall, he is Regan's cruel husband. He tries to eliminate Lear and Gloucester from the scene. Oswald, he is Goneril's servant. King of France, he marries Cordelia. He is willing to rescue Lear with Cordelia. Duke of Burgundy, he is the one who rejects Cordelia after discovering that she has nothing of his father's wealth and lands. Curran, servant of Gloucester. Old man, tenant of Gloucester. Doctor, he is Cordelia's attendant. Let's jump into the plot summary now. Act 1. The king is now old and wants to retire from monarchy and plans to divide his realm among his three daughters. Lear says he will give the largest share to the one who loves him most. Goneril the eldest of his daughter speaks first and flatters his father as Shakespeare puts, Sir, I love you more than words can wield the matter. The king is very happy about her love for her father in fulsome terms. Then Regan speaks and gets her share. Finally, the youngest daughter, Cordelia, speaks. She genuinely loves her father and says, without flattery remarks, I love your majesty according to my bond, no more nor less. She will reserve half of her love for her husband to be. The king gets angry and divides Cordelia's share as well between her elder sister, disinheriting Cordelia. Kent opposes Lear's unfair treatment of Cordelia. Kent makes Lear angry and in turn, he banishes him from the country. The Duke of Burgundy and the King of France are willing to marry Cordelia. Burgundy rejects Cordelia on learning that she has been disinherited. Despite being disinherited the King of France marries Cordelia who is inspired by her honesty. Meanwhile, Gloucester has introduced his illegitimate son, Edmund to Kent. Lear announces that he will now live with his two daughters and their husbands one by one. He has distributed everything except he reserves to himself 100 knights. Since Cordelia has now left with her husband, Goneril and Regan disclose that their love for their father was false and they render Lear a foolish old man. Gloucester's illegitimate son Edmund tricks his father against his only legitimate son, Edgar, making him think that Edgar plans to usurp the estate. The Earl of Kent is back in disguise as Caius. King hires Kent to Caius as a servant. At Albany and Goneril's house, Lear and Kent fight with Oswald. Lear gets to know that Goneril has now everything and does not respect and love her father even though she orders Lear to reduce the number of knights to fifty. Enraged. Lear departs for Regan's home but the fool, the king's advocate, predicts that Regan will treat him no better. Act 2. Edmund discovers the likelihood of a war between Cornwall and Albany and that Regan and Cornwall are to come to Gloucester's palace that evening. Edmund plans a fake attack by Edgar and Gloucester disinherits Edgar. Kent takes Lear's message to her daughter Regan and meets Oswald again. Oswald once again fights with Kent and Regan and her husband Cornwall put him in the stocks. Lear is enraged at the treatment of his messenger when he arrives at Regan's house. 
but Regan ignores his father as did Goneril. Having lost all his powers, Lear is very angry and cannot do anything. Lear rushes out, despite heavy storms to punish his disobedient daughters accompanied by Fool. Kent follows Lear to protect him from any danger. Gloucester protests against the king for mistreatment. Lear is left with none except Fool and Kent. After the storm Edgar, now disguised as Tom O. Bedlam, wandering on the moor, meets Lear. Now, they all are led by Kent to a shelter. Act 3. Kent informs a gentleman about the arrival of a French army in Britain that wants to reinstate Lear to the throne. Kent then sends a message through the gentleman to Cordelia while he looks for Lear on the moor or heath. Edmund betrays his father once he discovers that his father, Gloucester, knows everything about the forthcoming invasion of France on Britain. Edmund allies with Cornwall, Regan, and Goneril. Edmund and Goneril leave to warn Albany about the invasion, meanwhile, Gloucester is arrested and Regan along with Cornwall gouges his eyes out. A servant seeing everything there, could not resist himself and brutally attacks Cornwall, leaving him mortally wounded. Regan kills the servant and tells Gloucester that Edmund betrayed him. Later she sends Gloucester, as she had sent her father to the heath in the Act 3, out to wander the heath. Act 4 Edgar, now disguised as a madman, is also living on the heath where he meets his blinded father. Sightless and failing to recognize his son's voice, Gloucester begs him to lead him to a cliff where he can put an end to his ailing life. Goneril finds Edmund more attractive than her coward husband, Albany. Albany is now conscious and disgusted by the actions of Regan and Goneril. Edmund is back in Regan's house. Regan is now a widow and Goneril fears that she might steal Edmund from her and sends him a message through Oswald. Now, Kent leads Lear to the French army which is being commanded by Cordelia. But Lear is half mad and frustrated by his earlier foolishness. Regan instigates Albany to join her forces against the French. Edgar didn't lead his son to the cliff but instead, he pretended to lead him to the cliff and tells Gloucester that he has miraculously survived the falling. Lear is now completely mad and shouts that. The whole world is corrupt and runs off aimlessly. Oswald appears on the stage looking for Edmund. Regan orders Oswald to kill the blinded Gloucester but he is killed himself instead by Edgar. There is a Goneril's letter in Oswald's pocket in which she asks Edmund to kill her husband and marry her. Cordelia and Kent take care of the Mad King, Lear. Edmund, Albany, Goneril, and Regan meet with their army. Albany is of the mind that they will fight the French without harming Lear and Cordelia. Edmund has made promises to both the sisters, Regan and Goneril. Edgar plans the deaths of Albany, Cordelia, and Lear. Albany receives Goneril's letter from Edgar. The battle is fought between the two parties and the result is Britain's victory over the French, Cordelia and Lear are arrested. Edmund and Goneril send off Lear and Cordelia and order the execution of Cordelia. Act 5. The victorious party meets and Regan declares her wedding to Edmund. But Edmund has now been proclaimed a traitor by Albany who exposes the love affair of Edmund and Goneril. Regan had been poisoned by Goneril and first, she falls ill and then dies. Edmund goes against Albany meanwhile Edgar appears, masked and in armor, and asks Edmund for a duel. No one recognizes him as he is completely covered up. Edgar and Edmund fight the duel in which Edgar renders Edmund fatally injured. Goneril flees in shame and anger after Albany confronts her with a letter in his hand. Edgar now reveals himself that he is Edgar the only legitimate son of Gloucester who died recently in shock after learning that his son is alive. Goneril commits suicide after her plans are spoiled. The dying Edmund wants to save the king and Cordelia but his confession comes late. Cordelia is dead and having killed the executioner, Lear appears on the stage taking in his hands, the dead body of his beloved and honest daughter. The loyal Kent enters the scene and now Lear recognizes him. Lear is urged by Albany to resume the throne but he is now overwhelmed by whatever happened to him and finally dies peacefully. The next contender for the throne is Kent who denies it by saying that his master is calling him on a journey and he must obey him. Finally, Edgar pronounces himself the king.